Welcome to the wonderful world of wine from 46 Vineyards in the New England area of New South Wales. The inaugural New England Wine Show was held in October 2005. Now held in Glen Ennis each October, in conjunction with Gourmet in the Glen, the wine show is fast becoming a much anticipated annual event. As many of this current generation of grape growers and winemakers will tell you, the secrets to the finesse of wines from New England are the predominantly granite and basalt soils in which the grapes are grown and the overall stability of the cool climate. So sit back and enjoy a chilled glass of one of our prize-winning classic whites or delectable reds as we take you for a tour of some of the vines and wines of New England. David Graff's my name and we live at Armidale and we have Glen Hoyle wines. Our first major vintage was 2001 and we got 10 dozen bottles. So the winemaker did, did a, a, just an absolute labour of love and it was a beautiful drop and it's, it's still good six years later, still drinking very, very nicely. We actually picked two months later than the Hunter Valley and um, because grapes need to be what you call phenologically ripe to, to be at their very best, that means that the grape needs to ripen to the point where the grape would drop off naturally in natural circumstances in its own environment, normally in a forest where it originally grew. The grape would be ripe and fall to the ground and it's become progeny then for further generations of grapes. In the hunter, because it's so hot, that sugar ripeness comes in a lot earlier. It's a steep ripening, a quick ripening, whereas here we have a long, slow ripening. So our, ours is two months later, and the fruit actually develops beautiful complexity because of that, that lovely long ripening time. So that sets our wines apart from, from in the hot climate ones. We're a new area, we're, we're a fair way from, from Sydney or Brisbane and to get people to come to an area like this, like a new area, is um, takes time. It just takes time to develop the, the, the region's brand. Do I own uh, and make the wine here at uh, Wright Robertson? Um, we trade as Wright Robertson of Glencoe, but uh, I worked with uh, winemakers from uh, Europe and South, South Africa primarily and, and just developed a great interest in wine and, and really uh, didn't like the corporate scene so I thought that I'd like to do what these guys are doing. So I came back to Australia, uh, moved to Glen Innes uh, where I was married and that's how I got introduced to the region and I just, I just loved the New England, fell in love with it really. And at that stage there was a fellow getting about Richard Smart and uh, he's one of Australia's uh, great viticulturalists and he was very keen on the New England at this time and he uh, ran a couple of seminars and there was a bit of interest at the time from other guys to plant grapes. There was that great planting boom of between sort of 95 and 2000 right across Australia and, and that's where we got interested. Now the first thing that happens is the, the grapes are stripped off the, the bunch so the stems go uh, one direction and, and we retain the, the berries. The berries fall through um, the, the crusher and we have the skins and the flesh and the seeds. And that goes through the crusher and, and, it, and it ends up like a porridge, like a, a soup if you like. And, and that's pumped into a vat, into an open fermenter. And then we'll be fermenting the, the, the must for another 10 days. And it's during that fermentation that, that we extract the, uh, the tannin, the, the colour and the flavour from from the skins into the juice. It was about uh, six at that time, decided to plant and um, we went ahead 
planted in 90, a few trial vines in 1996. 1997 we uh, put another block in and uh, again some in 1999. We've got about, um, 12, about five hectares of grapes here now and we're pr producing around about uh, 2,500 cases a year off this property. All the uh, wine varieties have won medals. Uh, the ones that are really performing well are um, Semillon particularly. Um, it's won quite a few awards. Chardonnay is also doing well and um, in the reds Pinot Noir is showing a lot of potential here. Richard Smart was um, a consultant here in the early days and he's very interested in the area. He thinks it's got a lot of potential. And one of the attractions he finds is that there's such a diverse range of growing soils and climate in a short concentrated region that um, a wine um, making facility here would have access to such a range of different wine styles. Um, he feels that would be a, a big benefit to the industry. Well, I'm Doug Hume from Walden Woods Farm, just outside of Armadale in, in the great new wine region of New England. We realised that this had great potential, this New England area has enormous potential. Um, so we decided to look for a bit of land that we could grow grapes and we found this property. Good morning, Peter Reid from Doctors Nose Wines at Tetterfield down in my main vineyard, uh, going to do a pruning demonstration. I'll start, normally you start from one end of the vine and work through, picking up any of the little tails that were there that were left. One of the small differences in an organic vineyard is, is the dressing of the wounds after you prune. Uh, many conventional growers either don't put anything on these wounds or they spray with a, a synthetic chemical, which we believe is a little bit too harsh for, for our in environment. We use a biodynamic preparation called tree wound dressing to cover up or to protect all of the cuts we make when we prune our vines. We try and do this immediately after pruning to help protect the vine mainly against a disease called Eudipa dieback and it's causing a major problem in vineyards in Australia and will cause in the future even more. Once the vines get to over 15, year, 15 years old uh, this Eudipa dieback really attacks the vine and the way to protect it is to cut all the disease out by using a wound dressing. My name's Nick DeStephany, I'm the winemaker here at Reedy Creek Estate Wines and I'm also the youngest family member of the DeStephany family. Uh, purchased the property in 1968 and planted the first vines in 1969 and the official opening of the cellar door was in 1997. Uh, when the vineyards were expanded in 96, there was Chardonnay planted as, along with Merlot plus more Shiraz and then further plantings uh, two years after that of Chardonnay and Giraffe, which we were the first um, vineyard to plant that outside its traditional growing region of the Rutherglen. Uh, of the particular wine styles that we do, ones that have performed uh, remarkably well for us have been the Chardonnay. Uh, the first couple of vintages of Chardonnay we did won Best New South Wales Chardonnay and every Chardonnay since has won awards of a high level. The old vine Shiraz has always done very well for us. Uh, the 98 was rated in the top 10 in New South Wales. Good morning everyone, my name's Sean Cassidy. I'm the winemaker at Marilbara Estate, situated at Kingstown. Before you even pick the grapes, you've got to make up your mind what style of wine that we're making. And here at Marilba, we like to pride ourselves on a Shiraz that has a lovely cool climate nose, but still sustains great palate length and complexity. This particular bunch of grapes has been measured at 14 Beaumet, which at the end of the winemaking process will correlate into about 14% alcohol. The key issues are taste before you pick grapes and, and one way winemakers assess the, the uh, quality and the character of the grape is to actually taste it and chew it up. And one key factor that you can see 
with these grapes is that the seeds are lovely and ripe. They've just turned, uh, they've started to turn a lovely brown colour there. That indicates that the fruit's ready to go and it uh, should be ripe with no green characters. We always knew that we would be an organic vineyard and make organic wines. Uh, for us it's the only choice because we want to have a property or a vineyard where children can come in and play around the vineyard and you never have to be concerned about what they might eat or pick up. Apart from the fact that's how we need to be treating our world right now. Uh, just being a little more gentle and living more with nature rather than fighting it. One of the differences people often ask is in the winemaking process, how is it uh, different from a conventional wine? The, the simple answer is that we, we try to limit what we do with the wine. We have about half the, the level of sulphur dioxide that we, you would find in a conventional wine. And that's important because a lot of people have a sensitivity to sulphur dioxide which give, often gives people chronic headaches. So people that, that can't often drink a, a conventional wine because they, they suffer from headaches can often drink um, some of our organic wines. Uh, when it comes to orga making organic wine, uh, it's, it's essential just to leave out some of the chemicals that really change the natural flavor of wine. So our goal is to grow grapes that will reflect the soil and the environment in which they're grown and then to make wine which really reflects those grapes. So we don't want to interfere in the winery and organic winemaking is one of the best ways of doing that. Without saying that you know each particular vine, you know your area and, you, and you're always looking to improve, you're always looking to innovate. Just, just to try something different. You want um, a special difference to, to the bigger fellas that um, they have their recipe and they churn it out which is it's all very good it's all excellent to drink but it's all the same every year here is different the season's different the uh, uh, fruit's different you're just looking at what are the special things from the season and you try and uh, accentuate those the New England area is, is a very unique area in Australia. It has high country, it has uh, the cool climate, and, and it leads to wines that you will not get anywhere else in Australia. 